boys haven't dropped one for a while. What's the uh, move they like them to avoid that since the loss? Um, I think it was a really good reality check for us, um, I suppose, when you set some new things up at the start of the year and uh, and then I suppose we, when you look at the game and it was very unlike us how we played and um, we sort of, you know, we got beaten in so many areas and that's been a strength this year which um, even when we lost the Geelong game, the KPIs and the way we played, there was a lot to like about it but really to be honest, um, I think we had about 25 minutes of footy for the whole day that was something that you could smile about. The rest was pretty much chasing West Coast and uh, credit to them. Um, we look like we didn't have a lot of run, so you know, we'll make sure that we bring our running shoes this week. Do you think that was the worst performance the Yeah, it was, yeah. There's no doubt about it. I think even just looking at the results by um, the margin is it just is the worst result just from that. But it was just the way we played was the worst that we've gone about it. Um, you know, the opposition marked the ball at either end of the ground. They won drop of the ball through the midfield and they really dictated the terms in the way that we could use the ball compared to the way they use the footy. You've been obviously pretty lucky with injury up until now, but it's, it's a test for you at the moment. You've got, I'm not sure, obviously the last year he's coming back in, but it's testing at the moment in terms of personnel. Yeah, it is. It's, um, we didn't have Michael for the first you know, two or three, three weeks at the start of the year as well, so um, yeah, it just gives someone else a, uh, a spot and um, an opportunity, but it's probably been our ability to cover anyone being out. Sorry. Sorry. And uh, yeah, so that's been our ability to cover, you know, if someone's been out and someone taking up the slack. But um, Michael's form's been outstanding and, you know, just to replace him is going to be tough. But uh, I'm really excited to see who does step up and who takes the... I suppose control of that back six now and really, you know, does it, is it Jordan Russell that really starts to lead from the front? Is it, you know, is it Gibbs, Thornton, these types down there? Does, do they take the next step and really lead and control the back six, which probably Michael did for the games that he was in? Could Henderson be one of those players moves back there from centre forward to... He could, he could. That's a, uh, you know, Wade will come back into the team. So, um, you know, that's an option that we do have. Do we take Henderson back? Um, does Austin stay in the team there? That's sort of some of the things that we'll throw around at match committee this afternoon. Would you be reluctant to move Jared back, given that Jared? No, Jared won't go back. Okay. Yep. So, obviously... That's Michael's pretty clear in the yeah, set. Yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously, Michael's absence will get talked about a lot, but particularly this week, given the appointment and the the full forward that they've got under that end. Um, yep. How many options have you got to cover? We've probably got about three that we could play on Jack, but I suppose in the last few weeks, I think it's Vickery and Rewalt that have been the main target. So I think the targets have been about 21, 25 each, um, and the goals are about the same as well. So I think what Richmond have done, and I suppose you know, moving Jack out a little bit further and allowing Vickery to play the goal squares allowed him to grow as a player and he's playing really good football, you know, and the balance seems to be really good for them. So I think you, if you put too many eggs in stopping uh, the basket of stopping Jack, does, you know, Vickery get out and start to hit the scoreboard? So that'll be the one that we'll have to deal with both of those players. Can we stop it going in? You know, that would be great because last week we conceded 58 inside 50s and when you do that, you you got to be, you know, Scarlett, Silvani and the whole crew rolled into one to stop it, so how are we going over there? Is there, yeah, is there a switch that you turn off before you come in? That would be handy. Yep. Obviously West Coast are a different beast in terms of their height. Are you a bit concerned though going forward about the lack of height down your back end and muscle so to speak um, in stopping these sort of Oh, it's, a, it's a hard one to gauge in the fact that Michael went off sort of early in the second quarter. So that, that's a tough one to gauge because when you look at it, Jamison 194, uh, Thornton 192 and a half, and Austin's about 194 as well. So they played, and, and then you got Henderson. So I thought we were pretty big. Um, but when you lose one of them, it sort of might expose someone else. So that's probably the thing that happened on that day. And they're a bit unique in the way that they set up, um, you know, even with Darling coming in there at 191 as well. They've, they're a really big forward line, but what they've done so well, it's it's about that pressure that they create. Kennedy's very good 
you know, we're uh, applying pressure, so's Darling, Lacroix a, a smaller forward, Cox and well, Nat Nui chases and hunts the footy up. So what their big men do extremely well is put pressure on as well as catch the footy. Just going back to combating very well, have you learned much from what happened in the game? We well, kick six, so yeah, we learn a lot. Try and stop him from kicking. Uh, uh, um, yeah, we learn a bit uh, in that game, but I think it's changed a little bit, uh, you know, in the last 14, 15 weeks. So yeah, we'll just uh, take it on what's happened. Um, I think it's a new look forward line with Vickery playing a bit more in the goal square and Rewalt getting up higher. So it's a little bit different tactically from them. Pretty cheap with some of the fours I looked at last week. Can you go back and have a look at the week and see if there's any way you could have picked that that was going to happen? Have you? Um, I think you're always over... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's hard to say. We were in a four-week um, training loads uh, that were up and last week was our down week. So I don't know if it's a byproduct of that. Um, there was probably a few little indicators with um, how we're going defensively. I thought, you know, even though we only conceded 56, I thought a couple of times we were lucky that the opposition didn't use the ball a little bit better at times in the last four weeks. So there was a few little signs there, but nothing that sort of jumped out. Um, you always, you know, when you lose games of football, you analyse and analyse, you know, from your meeting and the... Um, the team meeting before, the you know the main training session, the review, the messages after the game. Did it all start from there? And uh, yeah, I can't put my finger on it. I just thought we were extremely um, flat and we didn't run like we have. And but there's credit to West Coast; they really hemmed us in and put us under enormous pressure. The blokes that obviously missed um, Dyer and uh, Robinson. Will you get a few back as well? Yeah, we will. We'll get weight back, uh, definitely, and Robertson uh, there. Layla is um, available, and um, he trained extremely well, and yeah, we'll probably go with Jeremy um, in regards to that. Um, yeah, I, just uh, to see how the boys pull up, because we've you know we've had our main session, so we don't have to put the team out, but we'll just see how Dyg and, and Kuno uh, pull up from their running. They did more running than football work today, so uh, we'll see how they pull up after that. How much did you miss the physicality of Robinson at the stoppages? There seemed to be two or three sort of rotating um, on and off Juddy at uh, the stoppages, really sort of hanging off him. Did you miss that physicality, that mid-group? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one, With even with Daigon in the in the back 50, his physicality that he brings to the group in regards to that, so more the, the robust, robust type player, and Kuno's in that bracket as well, so yeah, it probably looked like we missed a bit there. Um, I don't think there's too many players that uh, attack the footy like Mitch does in the AFL so um, yeah we, I thought we missed him around the, the congestion and whether he's getting the ball he's hitting bodies he's making it very hard for the opposition so yeah he probably um, is one that we really missed. When Mitch uh, went out late was there talk about Rob McLean sort of coming in sort of a similar player and he's in and under and, and hard at it um, and then Austin came in so what was the thinking there? It was more about Dennis to uh, Armfield to come in with his run and uh, I suppose the versatility of him to play everywhere. So we thought it may be just more balancing the team to play a different spot. Um, we had Carrazzo that could go inside as well and yeah, it was one that we sort of looked at later. You know, it could have been Brock to come in, but we went for more speed outside and think that um, could we get, you know, at Eddie had as well, could we get it, um, the Eagles with a bit more speed? But no, we couldn't actually... I suppose we actually won the possessions, but we really didn't hurt them. They were more physical than us in the game. Yep. It's probably the crossroads at the moment with Gus Bruce, and he's played some really good BFL footy. Yeah. It just seems yep. can't be able to, you can't put that into a good, a really solid AFL. Yeah, he's um, no, from the, uh, is he at the crossroads? And no, I think he's just chipping away. I suppose his opportunity will come back um, you know, in the season, and it might come back today uh, at the selection table. I think he's done a really good job back at VFL level. We probably had players, and from a strategy point of view going into a game, we might have had a different approach about how many midfielders we need, and the balance of that has been pretty critical. So that's why he's probably missed out at times as well. But he's done a great job at VFL level just to hunt the footy up and, and win. He's probably averaging about 26 to 8 possessions a week, and he's doing his role and playing his part. And if we need him to come up, he's sitting there ready to go. Just speak with Joey, was he cooked last week? Yeah, virus or no. 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 No, they... Just played like he was just... Oh, they did a... I suppose they did a fantastic job 
on most of our blokes. You know, we probably only had one clear cut winner on the day, and that was um, Heathy Scotland.